Spotify's top podcaster breaking his silence. Joe Rogan had to respond finally to the whole Spotify. Joe Rogan, the podcaster I told you about before. Podcaster the, Joe Rogan, uh, who is a frequent spreader of COVID misinformation, was fact checked. A uh, fact check. Hello, on his show. friends. So there's, of course, no avoiding Joe Rogan and his controversy with Spotify. But while well, you can find tons of videos on the latest news, I think there was a part that was missing. I have a strong personal opinion about this, and I am going to tell you what that opinion is. But first, we are going to cover the facts. How did this guy become the most significant interviewer in the world? Even bigger than her? Is this a joke? Let's talk about Joe Rogan in this episode of Company Forensics. Hey guys, as much as we love making videos for our channel, it's not what we do for a living. At Slidebean, we help companies raise capital by helping them tell better stories with their pitch decks, crawl the web for investors, keep track of those conversations and when investors look at their slides, run their financial modeling, keep track of SaaS expenses. Slidebean is a suite of tools for startup founders. Sign up is free, so head out to slidebean.com to try it out. So Joe Rogan didn't invent podcasts, nor did he add a revolutionary new formula to the mix, but he is the biggest name in the business. And whether you like him or not, he is good at it. He's a brilliant interviewer who knows about a bunch of different topics, or at least he pretends to. Plus, he's an expert in relaxed conversation, so his guests feel safe and they talk about anything without consequences. And I said, Jesus Christ, I don't know if I'm gonna shit myself or fart, but let me just take a chance. In no time, Rogan's stream of consciousness traps them in. And then even Elon Musk went out and smoked some sandwiches and, and made funny faces. And that little stunt, of course, pieced a bunch of people off. But if you look past, if you look past his bro persona, there's someone who holds his cool. He knows when to pressure and he knows when not to. Plus, Joe Rogan loves to stir stuff up. Add to this the fact that his guests are polarizing, for better or for worse. That converts into a perfect podcast recipe. Some of his guests are extreme opposites. You have Alex Jones and Bernie Sanders, or Jordan Peterson, Henry Rollins, Yeonmi Park, a North Korean defector. The list is endless and some big names harbor criticism. And the media, of course, loves preying upon his political views and it's understandable. It's the biggest podcast in the world, after all. That's drawn to have people talking about it. Now, one of the main criticisms is the frequency of a certain type of guest. And Rogan can take a hit or two when it comes to having arguments. I'm not going to sit here with no medical degree, listening to you with no medical degree, with an American flag behind you, smoking a cigar, <laughs> acting like we know what's up. And this is important, very important. There are instances when he changes his mind, or at least he chooses to laugh instead of arguing, which is a brilliant strategy when interviewing. This leads us to another point about Rogan. For years, he has used platforms such as blogs to discuss topics that interest him. And these go from conspiracy theories to such taboos as politics and religion. Fans loved these blogs, and as his brand name grew, the topics became even more controversial. First, he criticized transgender fighters, and then he dove into vaccines. But I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll, we're gonna get there. The point is, you can, you can get the essence of why Rogan became a household name. And his biography is just as essential to this story. So here's a quick overview of his life. He grew up a nomad. His earliest childhood was violent, but his mother divorced his father and then married a traveling hippie. Damaging shit. My father, my real father was crazy. He was like a psychotic person. Really? Yeah, he was. He beat the fuck out of my mother. Like he would be the type to come up. He beat up, the, like, the fuck out of my fuck cousin. Up? Really? Yeah, yeah, he beat my cousin up. He picked my cousin up by his hair. Rogan went from New Jersey to Florida to the small city of Newton, Massachusetts. And then Rogan made the best decision of his life, he said. At 14, he took up martial arts and he was good at it, winning many championships. But by age 21, his body was taking a toll and he decided to quit and he had no idea what to do. So university was pointless, he said. So Rogan took odd jobs to make money. He delivered newspapers and taught martial arts. He even drove a private investigator around during stakeouts which is honestly kind of like a cool job. <laughs> but then he found his next calling. His friends convinced him to take the stage and to try out stand-up comedy. And the comedy. little dog's like, where are we going, Spike? <laughs> and the, little, the big dog's like, shut up. <laughs> okay. 
I was the little dog. And, um, and he loved it, but Massachusetts doesn't scream fame. So Rogan moved to LA in 94 to try and make it big. So in LA, Rogan landed his first big acting job in 95 as electrician Joel Garelli in news radio. And there was some truth to that character. Garelli didn't believe in consumer products and loved conspiracy theories. Plus he knew a lot about a lot of stuff. Rogan said that he loved his time in news radio, but he eventually got bored and then he landed the role as the host of Fear Factor, which he did not only for the money and for the exposure, but we'd be overlooking this crucial moment in Rogan's career if we don't mention Dothan, Alabama in 97. That's when Rogan started working in the UFC as a backstage interviewer. He was vital in the early stages of the UFC, but the job wasn't very glamorous. He had to quit in 99 because he actually lost money covering the events in the backwoods of rural USA. So this short time would prove vital for him in the future. By the way, did you know that Rogan had a three album deal with Warner Music? I listened to one track and it's not my favorite type of music. She climbed on top and I lost my breath. And when she squeezed it tight, she nearly scared me to death. Anyway, then Rogan launched his blog where he discussed topics for his comedy routines. This blog would become this free flowing river of bullshit and intelligence combined. And guess what? People loved it anyway. Around then in 2001, Zufa Entertainment purchased UFC. And if you know anything about Dana White, it's that he gets what he wants. Rogan befriended White and the UFC owner wanted Rogan in his show. So he begged Joe Rogan to start commentating, but Joe, Joe just wanted to watch the fights. And for about a year, White pressured and pressured. Then Rogan agreed to commentate on the UFC matches and he actually did for free at first. I mean, not for free, in exchange for tickets and beers. Anyway, in 2002, he agreed to enter the UFC payroll. And for the next 15 years, he would become a fixture in the sport. Keep in mind that UFC grew fast and then turned into this cornerstone of fighting entertainment. Very worth of a story for Company Forensics if you want us to cover it. But Rogan's media exposure would only grow right when he started his podcast. So fast forward to 2020, Spotify paid Joe Rogan $100 million to have exclusivity over his podcast. That's $100 million. Rogan was now the highest paid podcaster in the world. It was the second most downloaded podcast in Apple for two years. Also, it earned several awards and praise from the media. And many call the Joe Rogan experience the last bastion of free speech. After all, he thrived on talking about taboo subjects in this era of cancel culture, even if doing this would eventually bite back. There are a lot of controversies surrounding Joe Rogan, and he has around 1,800 episodes so far. So of course we're gonna be leaving out some of this stuff. But the point here is that Joe Rogan is kind of predictable in choosing his guests. Generally, he divides them into four. There are comedians and celebrities, fighters and athletes, politicians, and finally, thinkers. And, uh, thinkers with some air quotes. And some of these guests have shown these ludicrous points of view with very little evidence. But oh, I just go by science. That's it, scientific okay. evidence, like real science. Like water is always level, right? We know that. Water is always level. At this 100 is a miles bad in the conversation ocean. conversation if you don't understand how gravity works over a, a giant fucking no, sphere. No, no, if, if. Rogan likes to provoke them, even if he disagrees. But sometimes when facing a spicy topic, Rogan lays low and then just lets the guest speak. This silence can be controversial, whether by brilliance, by bias, or conviction. Take Jack Dorsey, for example. By comparison, his interview was soft, and Rogan didn't dive deep into how Twitter did or didn't censor certain accounts. And of course, some people wanted Rogan to drill Dorsey, but he didn't. The backlash was so much that Rogan had to apologize. I didn't think the podcast would create such a controversy, but that's probably poor prior planning on my part. He again had to apologize after saying that activists had started the Oregon fires that ravaged most of the region. If a less yeah. arrested left-wing people for lighting these forest fires, you know, air quote activists. And uh, this is something that's also not widely being reported. You know, that but the straw that broke the camel's back came later. And for that, of course, we need to talk about the pandemic. Now, Rogan's views on COVID-19 and vaccination were fuel to a fire that was, of course, already burning bright. Now, before we go on with the video, I need to make a very big disclaimer. And if you wanna stop watching after this, then that's fine. The last time we touched on this topic, hell broke loose. 
So I'm going to make my position abundantly clear first. I believe in vaccination. I am triple jabbed. The overwhelming majority of the scientific community agrees with this. And that is the vantage point from which we look at this. Again, if that makes you feel like you disagree and need to unsubscribe from this channel, I am ready to live with that. Okay, moving on. So Rogan invited Robert Malone. This is a controversial doctor who criticized vaccination. The doctor divulged false claims regarding the vaccine. And then he went as far as drawing comparisons between the current health crisis in, in the US, in the world, and Nazi Germany. Scientists have, of course, already dispelled all of these claims. So people were angry. As a result, 270 medical professionals signed a petition for Spotify to remove the podcast entirely. And, and by the way, this was not the first time this has happened. In the past, Rogan had questioned vaccination and even promoted medication that had no evidence of working against COVID. And then when he finally tested positive, he listed this array of treatments with no scientific backing. A blocker of viral uh, replica, replicase, R-E-P-L-I-C-A-S-E, protease, and I don't know what this word is. And the problem, of course, is that Rogan is not a doctor. And he never said, hey, I'm not a doctor and all this might be bullshit. I don't know. Don't try this at home. You, you have to put a disclaimer on that. Even Jackass does it. Accordingly, MTV and the producers must insist that no one attempt to recreate or reenact any stunt or activity performed on this show. This stance led many artists to call him out. First, Neil Young threatened Spotify, and when he got no response, he actually pulled out all of his music. And then Joni Mitchell and others followed suit. Joe Rogan then took to his social networks to say that he would provide a more open approach to this podcast and all this talk that he always does after he screws up. And the world believed him. Even The Rock chimed in, backing him up. Dwayne The Rock Johnson is expressing support for Spotify podcaster Joe Rogan as the White House calls on big tech. Then to things got down. worse. People started digging dirt from Rogan's long, very long history of talking about everything in this podcast. And then this video was released of all the times that Rogan used the N word. Word. Uh, you've already said D is just like dang. She's calling you a it's like this boy that he's. This prompted another apology from him. And then in his apology, some fans praised him. They praised him for owning up to it, but others called him out saying that he should never use that term nor rely on the excuse that he has black friends. Dwayne Johnson backed out of his support as well. And while all of this was happening with him, Spotify was busy trying to develop ways to to cool this dumpster fire. Spotify's founder, Daniel Ek, performed some actions that felt kind of in favor of Rogan. And after all, he's still there. Spotify has taken down tens of Rogan's episodes, but the podcast is still there. The company has labeled others with disclaimers about misinformation, but people were demanding more. Now, Ek has said that silencing Joe Rogan isn't the right thing to do. I'm inclined to agree, but of course, Spotify's CEO has a bias of $100 million, so What's his opinion going to be? Anyway, that's the core issue here. What is the right action to take? Is it is it the platforming Joe Rogan forever? Is it giving him a platform to say whatever he wants, including racist slurs to millions of people? So here's me again, taking a risk and, and saying what I think. I don't think that Joe Rogan should be the platform or canceled. The big difference between him and many other people that have gotten canceled is that he has owned up to his mistakes and he's apologized. But the problem with cancel culture is that they see no end. It tries to bury people forever. Cancel culture doesn't see apologies or regrets. It looks to end people's careers from sometimes a single mistake. And I don't think that's right. Now, that being said, I do think that misinformation must be stopped. Warnings are not enough. Fake news are dangerous and there's real, real tangible impact when people have open access to misinformation. More than that, these platforms are private companies. They have the right to remove content that doesn't represent their values. I think that Neil Young and all the other artists that have pulled out of Spotify were brave and are on the right. It got everyone's attention and that's what we needed here. Scientists or doctors failed to do so. If the content that a platform features goes against your values or offends a group of people or spreads false information, yes, false, I'm saying that this is false information because that's what science says, then they have every right to raise a flag. Finally, finally, racist comments shouldn't belong in a widely accessible private platform. My father is black and I have heard his stories and I am fortunate that through all of my upbringing, racism was just stories for me. 
I grew up in a country, in a city, in a school where racism is rare or non-existent. And I was the only black kid in the school. But if millions of people are offended by this man using racial slurs, then that content does not belong. So a flag has been raised. Rogan seems to be sorry and has apologized. I think that that is a victory. Rogan wants to remain neutral. The right-wing site Rumble offered Rogan $100 million to transfer his content there and Rogan rejected it. I think it's a good signal on where he stands. Now, this Spotify CEO has vowed to raise $100 million for creators from marginalized communities to counter the backlash, but many agree that it's not enough. I agree that it's not enough. The controversial episodes should be pulled, but we can't keep canceling people forever, especially if they seem, they seem at least to have learned from their mistakes. There's gonna be some backlash with that, but thanks for watching. <laughs> uh, please keep it civil in the comments and we'll see you next week.